Welcome to Taco Tuesday, brought to you by Living Live Media. This is the talk show that brings you fun, positive, and uplifting content every Tuesday from 12 at 12 p.m. Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern, and 8 p.m. UK time. Today, we're going to have an awesome show. We're going to be talking about near-death experiences. If you've had a near-death experience, type NDE in the comments below, just so we know that you've had one. We have a couple special guests that will be joining us today, David Schwartz and Scarlett Heinbush. Um, they're going to talk about their near-death experience love story. And Marcus Ambrister will be sharing his recent near-death experience. So if you uh, like this topic, you know, go ahead and type the word talk in the comments below. If you want to connect with, oh, go ahead and Stephen, show us on the screen with us, the crew of Taco Tuesday. You go ahead and type the word talk in the comments and there's going to be a messenger bot there is going to allow you to connect with me, Mary, Anita, Stephen, or any of the guests that we have on the show. So we're going to start off the show by just introducing ourselves really quickly, and then we're going to get right into it, the near-death experiences. So Stephen, I'd love for you to come up on the screen so you can introduce yourself first. And if I don't see you come up, then I'm just going to wait for a little bit. But you guys, if you have any questions or comments, please type them in the comments below, and we'll get to those during the show while we're live. If you're watching a replay, type hashtag replay, and then we'll get to your questions later as well. So, Stephen, why don't you go and introduce yourself? And I got to see people coming in. Hey, Emma, Alicia, Anna. We got Mary, Anita, me, Scarlett. Everybody's coming on in, typing the word talk in the comments. This is going to be a lot of fun. This is my dream come true, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you so much for being part of this. As you can tell, I'm a little bit excited. So A little, <laughs> a little bit excited, yeah. Uh, thank you, Linda. This is Stephen. You won't see me for the rest of the show, fingers crossed. I'm based in Wiltshire in England. I'm producing the show and uh, I'm happy to be working with Linda and Mary and Anita. And on with the show. I'll disappear. You won't see me again. <laughs> Have a good show. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Stephen, so much. Get back into that green room. So, Mary, why don't you introduce us, you know, introduce us, let us know who you are, what is it that you do. And then also just want to let you all know that, again, if you type the word talk in the comments below, if you want to connect with Mary, there's uh, there are links there. For you to connect with her also with you know me Stephen Anita and our guests so Mary go ahead and introduce yourself well great thank you Linda I'm so excited to be on your first <laughs> show <laughs> that is so exciting thank you very much and thank you everyone for voting myself into being one of the co-hosts I am just so freaking excited so thank you very much but I'm Mary Ziola Vega I'm from Thriving Athletes and Empowering Athletes for Life I help athletes find the perfect fit athletically and academically and graduate with little or no debt and just loving the fact that I can go ahead and help share my friend Linda and this great show, and along with my friend Anita, who is all from the great co-op, and I'm just really excited about it. So that's about me. <laughs> woo, woo. Let's hear it from Mary. Type the word talk if you want to connect with Mary after the show. <laughs> now, Anita, let's hear from you. What are you all about, girl? Hey, uh, first of all, yes, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. And thank you to everyone who took the time to vote and uh, have me be a part of this. It was so incredible. The whole journey was incredible. And I'm so glad that we're having our very first show today. So thank you all. Um, my name is Anita Myers. I'm with Interscope Consulting. I provide coaching, training, and consulting to help people uh, reveal their power so that they can master their own universe. And again, if you want to connect with Anita, go ahead and type the word talk in the comments below and uh, messenger bot will send you a message. You need to type the word talk again. It's just a Facebook thing. Like we have to type it, type it twice so that Facebook knows that you really, really want it. And then you can connect with the ladies there. Um, tell us in the comments below where you are tuning in from. We'd love to know. And I'm going to give you guys just a little, um, just a little advanced warning. I have two little dogs. And it sounds like that periodically they're going to be getting up and walking around a little bit and they might bark from time to time. If that happens, I will mute myself so you guys don't have to hear it. So just they're already saying, let me out, let me out. I'm like, no, you guys got to stay in. You were out like for four hours already. Okay. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, my name is Linda West and I am the founder of Living Live Media. I help women entrepreneurs discover their voice and then share it with the masses. So if you're interested in that, go and connect with me below. Talk Chicago area for the co-op. We have people from the co-op <laughs> coming on in. If you are from the co-op, that is the co-op network. And it's on Facebook. Go ahead and check it out. Um, shout out to the co-op, even though they're not sponsoring the show yet. Okay. <laughs> now, before we get into it, I want to thank our sponsors. So go ahead and show that up on the screen, Stephen. We have the Live Video Hub and Living Live Media. Those are our sponsors. So I want to thank them so much for, you know, sponsoring this show today. Okay, let's get into it. Let's bring up 
Scarlett and David. We're going to hear their near-death experience, David's near-death experience, and how love happened. I guess what I'm going to say. I'm not going to say anything more because I don't want to ruin it. So Dave, David and Scarlett, it's so good to see you guys today. How are you doing? Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so let, let's get right into it because I want to make sure that we you know, take the most advantage of this amount of time that we have today. And then periodically, you know, Anita, Mary and I are going to have some questions for you along the way. If any of us start like jumping on each other, I'm just sharing this with the audience because I want you to know what's happening. If we start to jump on each other, I'll stop it and I'll say, OK, and I'll point to a person to talk that way. We can avoid <laughs> that, you know, everybody jumping on each other. So let's hear your story. And like, who the heck are you guys? OK, well, hi, everybody. My name is Dr. Scarlett Heimbuch, Um, And this is David Schwartz <laughs> from Richmond, Virginia. Yep, yeah. And um, we are um, I just finished a book called Waking Up to Love, and it was published in January of last year. And I've been out sharing our story uh this this event are it's they talking because i can't hear them and um, you can't hear us can you hear us okay i can hear you just fine so anita you might want to go out and come back in and see okay. if that works because i can hear i can hear them fine mary, mary can you hear them yes i can okay okay perfect okay Anything so anita go out and come back in. <laughs> <laughs> want to clarify we had what is called a shared near-death experience um, and I think that's really important. And this happened 2005 in the fall of 2005. So it's been over 13 years ago. Um, it took a long time for us both to process what had happened to even really talk about it, let alone write about it. And the reason we ended up writing about it was because people are fascinated about these experiences. And what was very unusual about ours is that shared death experiences where someone's passing on um, are becoming more known, but shared near death where somebody was passing on but decided to come back is very rare. And what happened is David and I met when I was working with him doing Reiki, which is for those who don't know, it's energy healing work. Um, I met his mother and David had been in a hospital dying from a very rare form of vasculitis he had been in unresponsive coma with his lungs and kidneys shut down on a coma, on in a coma, on life support, heart out of rhythm, having septic shock, double pneumonia, um, a chest tube because um, his lungs had were not getting enough oxygen. And his mother flew in from San Francisco to Richmond um, for the third time because she was called that day by the doctors to come say goodbye. She hopped the plane. I met her that night. And it touched my heart so much when she was standing crying. And well, she wasn't crying. She was very stoic. But people that I knew, I'd never met David before this, but people I knew knew David and I met her and it just touched my heart. And she was thanking everybody for all the support they'd given to David, but that he wasn't going to make it. And she had signed the funeral directives that day. So um, being a mom and an energy healer, and at that time, I was very involved in my prayer team at the church I was attending. Um, I went up to her when I was getting ready to leave, and I was going to say how sorry I was, but what came out of my mouth was, I don't think you should give up hope yet. To this day, I don't know why I said it, um, because there's always that disconnect between sometimes when your spirit is talking versus what your head is saying. So long story short, she gave me permission to go see him the next day if he was even alive. And he was, barely. Yeah. <laughs> Yay, David. <laughs> As you know, he lived. <laughs> but what Spoiler happened? Spoiler alert. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I began working with him. I asked his permission. We had, like I said, we'd never met in life before, but we had a lot of friends, mutual friends. And we were both, um, I'll just tell you it's in the book. We were both in the recovery community, 12 step recovery. Um, I had not been really involved. I'd been busy with school, I was working on my doctorate at the time. And um, so anyway, we'd never met. And um, I can't tell you why I felt compelled to go work with him, but I did. Um, but I had to find out from him what he wanted, because when someone is that close to death and the signs were just so, so awful, it, it was like, what are you going to do here? So when I went in that day to work with him, he was very bloated from the kidney failure and he had all the tubes, the ch the IV lines, all these things. Don't sugarcoat it. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> and um, so I asked his permission to work with him if he wanted. And, and um, 
so I took his hand and that's when um, I realized I felt his feelings. And I, I, like I said, this is a complete stranger and I really didn't know anything about him, but I just felt his feelings and it just felt like he wasn't in a happy place. And um, so, but I, you know, told him, I said, you know, wherever you are and whatever you choose is okay. All is forgiven. You are loved. You're so loved. And so many people love you and that's why I'm here. And um, I said, so whatever he chose to do, whether to leave this life or stay in it would be okay. Um, just know that he was loved and that the there's nothing he could have ever done that he would not be loved. And that was what I felt. So I worked with him for about um, 20 minutes. The nurses were standing around, you know, like, hey, who's this lady working, you know? Um, and I didn't feel much reaction. And um, so I took his hand to leave. And as I did, again, he had the pulse oximeter on, he had no grip. Um, and all of a sudden my hand was fused to his. And I realized that his spirit was reaching back. So I asked him um, if he decided to stick around, I was going to make a promise that I would come back. And uh, so that's what happened. So I came back. He was still there. We had some very, very unusual experiences. But about the fifth day when I was working with him, all of a sudden, I, I always started with the healing prayer, asking for the highest and best, most sacred and holy energies. I am Christian. David is Jewish. And I wanted to be very respectful of, of his faith and mine. And um, so I pray in my car to Jesus before I came in. <laughs> and we laugh about that today. But um, but that's, you know, but that's where I was anchored. And and the universe and, and my our understanding of God is so huge, we don't limit it. So and it's really not those divisions are kind of false anyway, but we're, we're in total spirit. So when I started this session with him, I was holding his hand, saying my prayer, going into the quiet. And next thing I know, I was out of my body and I was there with him. And we were in this place of love that is there's no words for it. And all I, I always talk about it's like dots of white light, tiny little pinpoints of dots of so many of them. Of it's like I called it liquid love, although it's not wet. I don't have a words to describe the uh, chemical or chemistry of it, but we were just there embraced in this kind of love that you don't have any words for. And my soul just knew that I knew him and that I had always known him, had always loved him. And I guess he knew the same. And um, and so we were having this soul connection in this in cocoon of love and light. Um, which to me was the source of everything. And then I was right back in my body holding his hand. He was still unconscious. And I'm, I don't know what happened except all of a sudden I knew I love this person. And now i really, really wanted him to live. Um, it's not that I didn't, but as a healer, you don't get involved in people's outcomes, but now I was, now I wanted him to live. So I'm going to hush for a minute and turn it over to him. Well, yeah. It, you know, Scarlett mentioned that it took, 10 years plus to, to write the book. And even though it took 10 years, I, I was still processing even after that. And that's why she wrote the book on her own, basically. Uh, but while it took 10 months to 10 years to write the book, it only took us seven months to get married after, after, <laughs> after we met. So um, we, we definitely processed something. Uh, you, you know, when I got sick, it was kind of, uh, it was out of the blue. It, it was like, I was uh, living uh, away from home. I was in Richmond, Virginia on a, on a contract job. And uh, they, they, I was working for a, a very large bank, which I still work for today. Um, and as I started to get sicker and sicker, I realized that I wasn't going to be able to continue to do what I'm doing. So I, I was in a place where I was trying to turn my life around. I was recently recently had stopped drinking and stopped using drugs and was trying to kind of get my life together by going to Alcoholics Anonymous meetings and, and, and working at this new job out in Richmond. And, and, but I really felt sort of dead inside, uh, emotionally and spiritually. Uh, my marriage, I, I was married at the time. My marriage was failing. Uh, I just really was not in a good place. And so, when my body just shut down and said, that's it, if you're not going to, you know, that's the way I interpret it is that my body just said, if you're not going to take charge and do something positive, we're going to shut you down. And so I ended up in a coma in St. Mary's hospital in Richmond. And while I don't have a good 
uh, conscious understanding or ability to describe exactly what happened, uh, like Scarlett did very well and eloquently. <laughs> it's hard to do it in words, but on the page, she did a great job. Um, but I can say that something definitely happened that put me into a space where I knew her because the first conscious thoughts that I had when I came out of my coma, when I laid eyes on her was that here was an angel. And that's the words I always use is here's my angel. And that I was in love with her in, in the way that we're all thinking of and that I knew everything about her and that I was going to marry her. And, and we had I never met, like I said, right. We had some mutual friends, but we had never met and had mutual friends and my mother were how she ended up in my hospital room. Uh, so to say that I don't really recall anything, well, well, maybe I can't describe exactly in words what happened to us. Obviously, something happened because it's not every day that somebody will wake up out of a coma and look at somebody they've never set eyes on before and say, oh, I know everything about you and I love you and I'm going to marry you. Now, to get to that point, it took a little <laughs> bit of time because obviously we were both sort of like, what's going on here and not really knowing each other in the in the in the physical, natural world, uh, took a little bit of navigating to get to that point. But when you think about everything that, that had happened and, and the way it happened, um, seven months seemed like a pretty quick time, really, uh, for us to get married. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so so that that was it. That was the core of, of what happened. And, and when, mm -hmm. when I got back and when I came back to life, it wasn't just that I was, okay, my kidneys are regenerating for no reason because kidneys don't regenerate. I came back at, I, I wasn't supposed to survive. I was the sickest guy in the hospital twice. Um, <laughs> you know, they called me miracle boy. My nurses did. And the doctors. Uh, and the doctors. It, it was, all that was great, but I also had a second chance at like living a decent life, right? Being, being the kind of man, being the kind of father, I have two daughters grown uh, being the kind of, you know, husband and and uh, partner that I had always wanted to be, being the kind of spiritual person that I'd always wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And this gave me that opportunity. So there's a, that all kind of wraps up together as to why I think I made the decision to come back. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm, I'm, so, so first, first I want to ask a question. Yeah. Okay, so somebody's... Okay, um, if that happens again, I'll stop talking. Okay, so Christy um, Perner asked the question, do you feel more intuitive or connected to God's love since you had this experience? And just so you guys know, we have about uh, 13, 15 minutes. So I wanna make sure we get as many questions as possible. So again, do you guys feel more connected? Like in lightning speed. <laughs> yes, yeah, lightning sure speed. I definitely, I definitely feel more connected to spirit, more, uh, more intuitive, uh, definitely, uh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, and for me, I'd always been in a spiritual place, but this something happened to me that transformed my healing abilities even further and also my understanding of God and the universe, um, which was so much greater than what I had even understood before. And we, I put this in the book. It took also a long time for me to come to terms with this. But when David said that kidneys don't regenerate, they don't regenerate. Normally, um, they're completely destroyed in his work. And um, they said if he survived this, in addition to perhaps having um, being in persistent vegetative state from the brain, stem, brains shutting down everything um, or brain damage, that the kidneys would be he'd be on life, you know, permanent dialysis, perhaps on a transplant list if they even considered it viable. Um, what happened um, You when we were out of body and I was out of body, I saw and experienced what we call, I call them blue angels, the blue healing team. These were beings that were colored blue and they are not in this dimension. But again, all my prayers had always been under sacred and holy grace. It had to be under God's hand or we did not want it. So these beings replaced David's kidneys. Um, I know it sounds crazy, but that's what happened. And David and I have spoken at IANS conferences for several years now, and IANS is the International Association of Near Death Studies. People all over the world, as we were, we were, I was embarrassed to talk about it, thinking people would already, our story strange enough, but to mention that, mm -hmm. um, people all over the world are having these experiences with the blue beings. 
And so they're standing up telling us about it. And this man in Hungary who wrote a book, he had been dead clinically for nine minutes and also encountered the blue beings and his interpreter. And we had this discussion. So we were in Hungary earlier this year to, to share more there with that, the, the team there. Um, so anyway, there's no medical explanation why David's kidneys are perfect today, but they are. And perfect strong. Perfect, well, they are pretty perfect. <laughs> And um, you know, they, health, they work. They work great. <laughs> and health and our his health is excellent today. Um, so many things happen that we just can't explain in the human terms or even in medical terms. And that's why um, I call it a miracle because maybe we don't understand everything yet. But what I do understand is that there there's a huge, huge, huge force field of love that is so geared to love us with such compassion, with such forgiveness, with such healing. Um, and they, they show up in all kinds of ways and how we perceive them is us, I guess. But yes, it, it, it changed everything in my life. And at the time when Dave and I met, I was a mom with two boys with major disabilities that I couldn't fix. And it was hard for me. Um, one had severe ADHD and learning disabilities. And my other had son had epilepsy. And um, I was on my own as a single mom, coping, struggling, trying to understand why I couldn't help my children. Um, but they are my teachers. They're the ones who got me on the path to healing and learning. Yeah, and I know um, actually uh, somebody below, it was Abigail. She asked how they could get in touch with their book. So you guys, if you type the word talk in the comments below, you'll be able to connect with all of us. So anybody on the show, any of the guests in the future, any of the guests you have today, you'll be able to connect with them. And there's a link there to get a copy of uh, their book. So go ahead and, and type the word talk in the comments. The messenger bot will send you a message. You'll need to type the word talk again. And then just you'll look through and you'll find you know, who you want to actually connect with. So you guys have any questions for them? I mean, come on. Oh, man. I have so many. It's Mary's like, eyes went. I know. I'm like, I'm like, this is crazy. All right. Now, no disrespect, people at all. I'm, right. I'm the one on the over here going, what? What? <laughs> and then here, David, you're going to laugh at me. All right. And you said about drugs and alcohol. I said, oh, that must have been it. And then you went on with your story. And I was like, no, that couldn't have been it. And then you're going again. And I'm like, wow. I mean, because I'm sure everyone's thinking the same thing. Is like, wait. What, what, what drug were they on? And that's crazy. But to hear all this and hear that confirmed by other people is just like, I don't know what to say except for, uh, wow, uh, really? Wow. I, I can't wait to hear um, and read the book. I, I, to me, it's just like, wow, I've never even heard anything like this in my entire life. Linda, thank you. I never heard uh, anything like this at all. So uh, yeah, to be clear, I was clean. I, I've been clean and sober for uh, approximately 16 months when I went into the hospital with the- yeah. with, and with, I was so, wow. <laughs> so, yeah, we were both on our program of recovery before all of this. And I think that's wow. key. We had both decided, made the, that decision that we were committed to our spirituality, to our mm -hmm. health, to our growth, to our recovery um, way before, well, way, but before we met. And it was because wow. we had embraced that. And the whole key of any recovery is, you know, understanding God as you understand God. Right. And so that was, I didn't understand a lot, but I wanted to. Um, and that's really, and also I was, as a single mom, I was pretty lonely and having kids with disabilities, you don't have anything else mm -hmm. except your children. And then I was in school. So, you know, my life wasn't really anything except trying to understand what I was supposed to do, who I was supposed to be, how to survive, how to keep a roof over our head, how to help my kids with their health challenges, with schools. Uh, problems and and to keep myself sane you know so yeah, i think um, you guys did a good job at that <laughs> that's unbelievable that's what great. other questions are out there <laughs> um, you know I, I, yeah, i'm gonna I yeah. take a moment here because before we even got started i wanted to look up uh, how many near-death experiences might be reported per year i was curious about the statistics if there's any because i'm really fascinated by it and they show, you know, 200,000 uh, near-death experiences that are reported. So imagine that there's a whole lot more that aren't. But of, of the many stories I've ever read, because I'm really fascinated by mm -hmm. this whole concept, I have never heard a story, like, I don't know if you'd notice me shaking my head, but <laughs> it wasn't saying no. It was more like, oh, my goodness, jaw drop in my mind. But I never heard a story where someone who is living and fine is with someone who is not and is has been taken to that place. 
mm-hmm. where there's this thing called liquid love that I have a little goosebumps just thinking about it. Like liquid love sounds amazing to me. Um, and then, <laughs> and then you said something that I have a kind of a, a, a bias that I really am excited about. You said blue angels mm-hmm. and um, my husband's a Marine. And so I don't know if anyone understands out there that blue angels are one of the best flying teams <laughs> out there with the, right. with the awesome chest. Yeah. I wonder if there's a connection to that at all whatsoever, like mm-hmm. where they gave got the name blue angels from. But um, I have to tell you that hearing the story is uh, well, it makes me want to pray a whole lot more today. <laughs> yeah, um, really? Yeah. And be incredibly grateful. But I do have a, 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 a an honest question for you. When you were in a near-death experience, when you were in it, uh, how long did it feel like you were wherever you were? And how long was it actually in real, in earth time? Hmm. Great for question. me, well, David was still in the coma. So for me, um, I felt like I was there forever. But I think in reality, in human terms, I was probably there maybe less than two minutes. I didn't have a, I can't wear watches because I, my mother remind me, you can hear it first. I had a near death experience when I was four years old, we were nearly drowned in a pool and she uh, found me on the bottom of it, pulled me out and revived me. And um, so I was a very psychic kid. Um, so, and I put all that in the book, I just lay it out. Um, but I always had abilities uh, to kind of be out of my body, um, to just be in, di- to feel love that would be so huge, it would shake me. Um, so, you know, so I was already able to do these things and I've also, and having these experiences as a very young kid, I tried hard to understand this. And I always was the kid, um, who wanted to go to church. And if there were, it didn't matter what church, if there was a church nearby, I would go to it. Um, my parents weren't particularly religious, but, um, but I had to be in God's house wherever it was. So that was how I, um, was feeling from the whole time. So, um, so you know, was it one thing to go I'm ahead? Sorry, I, I was gonna say, I have one thing to say. I think it's the coolest thing I'm hearing here. Um, as the, I just find this so, first of all, unbelievable. Uh, um, I mean, like, as in wow, is fascinating. That yeah, you, yes, th- thank you. Um, that you, a Christian, him being from the Jewish faith, being all different faiths coming together and coming together for that whole purpose. I think that's what I'm finding is just so wonderful. Because I think everyone is in this game together, this whole yeah, we game are. we call life together. So, well, yeah, and I mean, it's, awesome. it's the same with everyone. You know, when you look at everybody's journey to to get to where they are today, they had to make so many choices and take so many different actions that if they just made one little, you know, butterfly effect, right, that's the easy, easy way to, mm-hmm. to phrase it. But, I mean, there, mm-hmm. there were so many strange things that happened to get us together in that room. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's kind of boggling. Well, like I said, I was a broke single mom. I could barely afford the gas to go see him, but I had, yeah. to, go, I had to listen to the higher call of my spirit. Cool. The other thing I wanted to say, um, shared near death, people are talking more about shared near death, shared death experiences where the person is healthy, but someone they're li- with and loving or not even loving, but that person is dying and their spirit is able to go along to them with a point. This is a whole new field of, of work that Raymond Moody is doing. Mm-hmm. A woman named Sharon um, Prentice wrote a her book about when being with her husband when he died and traveling with him. There's a whole field. Raymond Moody's doing a whole lot with that. So um, oh my Sharon's goodness. book is called Becoming Starlight. So I'm giving her a little shout out. Um, but a shared near death experience like what we had, which is he made the choice to come back. And that's what was unusual because he was his body was shutting down. But because we loved each other, he made a choice to come back for me and he has helped heal me. Wow. Well, you know, I just keep seeing these flashes of light behind Mary and I have a feeling there's <laughs> something related there. I don't know. It could be, I don't know. Well, you know what? It's I want to talk to my boys <laughs> and they love him. And, you know, it was a gift. It's been a gift for us both. Amen. Well, you know, I want to ask a question because Anita alluded to, you know, the blue angels and stuff. And mm-hmm. I had the same thought. And so my question is, like, do you guys know much about I don't know much about angels myself, but just wondering, are there different colored angels or like are blue angels specifically healing angels? Do you know anything of, along that line? Because I found that very interesting. Well, I call them angels, but I call them beings. We, 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 we certainly have found that when we went to the first international near death studies conference or my first one in, in 2015, 
Mm -hmm. uh, every time people started talking about uh, seeing strange things, uh, many of them were blue. So I don't know if that's a coincidence or what, but hmm. it seems like blue is a recurring color and recurring theme for, for people who have had near death experiences. Well, and I'll point out like the, some of the Indian, I think, is it Krishna who's blue? Um, Archangel yeah. Michael is known to be blue. I right, think Mother yeah. Mary is showing up. Yeah. As well. um, yeah, nothing new so, under the sun. So Me as blue, does that huh? help? Do I, do I get anything for being wearing blue today? Do I get anything? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but anyway, our book is available. It's Waking Up to Love, How Our Shared Near Death Experience Brought Miracles, Recovery, and Second Chances. And it's, it's honest. Um, I didn't sugarcoat anything about me and my life and poor choices up until the time that we met and, and my, my, my stumbling path to grace. And, um, and we're happy to connect with people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, in any way, shape or form, email, phone calls, whatever. If anybody has, you know, follow up questions, they want to I have ask a website. Us or, yeah. yeah. So you can get in touch with Scarlett through a website, get in touch with both of us that way. Yeah. So go ahead and type, if you're interested in connecting with them, type the word talk in the comments, messenger bot will send you, um, a list of all of us who are on the show, including all of the guests and go ahead and connect with, you know, Scarlett and David. I want to thank you guys so much for being here. I see Alicia put, you know, blue healing color. And mm -hmm. so I guess maybe it is a healing color. So maybe that's what it's all about. I don't know. Very interesting yeah. topic. I love seeing your guys's um, eyes just bug <laughs> out when you heard about this. I told you, I told you that was going to happen. And it did. I don't know. Now, Marcus is, we're going to bring up Marcus. Marcus. So I want to thank you to, um, oh, is the book on Audible? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. But we're it working is, on that. But it is on Amazon I'm, and available bookstores anywhere if you want to have it ordered. And you well, get you know, when you said Audible, I was like, oh my gosh, to hear your voices talk about this and your love and your passion. Yeah. You guys got to put it on Audible. Oh my God. Okay. That would be so All right. amazing. Well, that sounds good. That in the meantime, you get it on Kindle and I think you can get your Kindle to talk to you, but it won't be our voice. Unfortunately. No, I want your voice. <laughs> yeah. I think it should be your guys' voices. Cause yeah, like you said, like the yeah. passion, right? We can feel the energy. We can feel because you know, the voices we can, by the vibration, we can feel it. And so it's yeah. so cool. But I want to thank you two for being on the show today. I want to bring Marcus up. So you guys have a great day and I, I hope I'm looking forward to seeing you at Secret Knock again in March. So awesome. Okay. So, so we're going to go ahead and send um, Scarlett and David down. Oh, they popped down. And we're going to bring up Marcus. But before we bring up Marcus, uh, go ahead and on the screen, uh, Stephen. Oh, he's bringing him up. Sorry. I was, I spoke too soon. You know, go ahead and show up on the screen. Want to thank our sponsors, you know, Living Live Media and the Live Video Hub. So I want to thank them so much. Whoop, whoop, for, for sponsoring this show. <laughs> and I want to especially, especially, especially thank, you know, Anita and Mary for, you know, being co-hosts on the show. This is a dream I've had um, for all close to two years now when it originally started the dream and then putting everything into motion. So I want to thank you guys so much for being part of this show. Wasn't that amazing? Like, you know, I, 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 I need another show. I need another <laughs> show to spend at least one hour feeling mind blown because that's where I'm at. There you go. Okay, cool. Amazing. Awesome. That was crazy. That was <laughs> insane. It was so All I have to good. say is that, right, Anita, I need to sit with someone and actually talk it out. Because I think yeah, this is I just I need right. To yeah. That was huge. That was like huge. Full blown, like an hour that's just like Q, and Q, Q, Q. Yeah. And then AAA. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So wow. maybe we'll do that. that maybe we'll do like a special bonus show after, after the season is over. We'll do like the, because yeah. we're doing 12 shows, right? So we can do like the Baker's dozen and we can have the 13th show. Like we'll, you know, bring them back and have ask all those questions. Maybe yeah, we can I mean, bring I in some, <laughs> some scientists know. or something that, that can have some of the answers to the questions for us. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, <laughs> so wow. you guys, um, if you're interested again in connecting with anybody who's on the show, any like us, um, you know, Steven and any of the guests that we're going to have on the show, go ahead and type the word talk in the comments below. So I want to thank you all for being here. This is awesome. Share the show out. If you found that this is a very interesting topic, we want to just, you know, share the, share these stories because they really are incredible. So now we're going to bring up our next guest, Marcus and Marcus recently had a near death experience. He was actually one of the auditioneers to be on the taco Tuesday show. And it was about, I think it was about three days before he was going to be auditioned. And he sent me a message and he said, like, I'm in the hospital. I don't think I, I should audition, but I think I'll be ready. And I'm like, um, no, I'm not going to be part of that. <laughs> so, so anyway, so I was like, well, let's have you on the show though. And so he goes, okay, I'm in. So let's um, introduce, you know, Marcus Ambrester. Did I say your name right? Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Hi, Marcus. <clears throat> Hello. So, 
Welcome to the show, Marcus. And I'm really excited to hear. I don't know anything about Marcus's story, whereas, you know, Scarlett and David, I had met them previously. So I knew their story. I'd interviewed them before. So I knew their story. Marcus, I have zero idea what you're about to share with <laughs> okay. us. So I'm just really interested to hear this. Yeah, it, it wasn't a, a near-death experience exactly. The, uh, the, the part that really stands out is what, uh, like the place that I was able to stay in emotionally and spiritually while this whole thing was going on. So mm. um, let me just tell you real quickly. The, the doctor said that what happened to me never happens in, in – uh, it was epiglottitis, the epiglottis, which covers your windpipe when you swallow so that food and liquid doesn't get into your lungs. The epiglottis swole up to where it was blocking my airway. And it swole up to the point it was blocking my airway in like 99% in, in a matter of a day. And um, they said the, uh, the cultures came back and they said it was the strep, the strep throat virus but it never attacks the epiglottis and um, and again, never happens to adults. Epiglottitis never happens to adults. And um, so I had uh, like about 36 hours where I was like literally choking to death. Uh, but it was, it, it progressed so quickly. I was, um, my daughter asked me what it was like breathing like that. And, and I happened to have just gotten a, a coffee at the gas station and it had a stir stick. And like, if you think about the, the old stir sticks from like 20 years ago, the ones that had two small tubes in them, it's like, if you tried breathing through one of those, it's almost impossible. Mm -hmm. And just really, really, really quickly, your body starts to panic. And the, um, you know, and you, you constantly feel like you can't, catch your breath or you're holding your breath. The, uh, luckily I was able to exhale pretty well during this thing and the I'm breathing, breathing in. Right <laughs> yeah. Like breathing in, it was, um, uh, the, the other day, just for fun, I grabbed one of the, the newer style stir sticks, which are a little bit bigger. And I found if I bent it 45 degrees, that's what it was like trying to breathe in. And, um, mm. I like when, how you uh, said just for fun you did that. <laughs> just for fun. Just yeah. Yeah, I was just curious to be able to tell the stories like what is it like and mm. and uh that's what I found the um with while this was like I had like 104 fever for 4 days and oh, wow. the uh yeah it was it was really intense the um in the the, the day my my uh the fever spiked. I just had a sweat lodge and I've been doing native American spiritual work for 20 years now, 20, almost 21 years. And we just had a sweat lodge. And when I got home, I was going to take a shower and just wash the sweat lodge energy off of me. And I got, I turned the water on and the water was cold. And I was like, what's going on? Is my water heater broken? It turned out my fever was so high already, but I wasn't feeling it that it, I couldn't tell that the water was warm. And um, mm. so I sat on the couch, was watching a movie with my daughter and my body started shaking and I grabbed the thermometer that turned out my digital thermometer was broken. It said my, my temperature was 99.1. And, but my body was telling me it was up close to one Oh four. And, um, so after about a half hour, I was just hanging out with my kids, watching a, watching a movie with my daughter. And finally, I started shaking so bad. I was like, okay, I got to go get in the shower. The, uh, and I went and I found when I turned the water like all the way hot, which in, in my place, the water is like up close to 140 degrees. It's like then I could feel it. But, you know, my body temperature was that high. And um, the... Um, both of the kids had been sick the previous weeks and there was no strep, no flu virus, anything like that. So I figured I just had a virus, just need to, you know, keep the fever down with ibuprofen and I'd be good. And it, it wasn't that way. The, um, so I spent, uh, a full day here at the house. I wouldn't recommend anybody not to go to the doctor right away, but, 
as it turned out, it, it wound up being kind of a good thing. The, um, with, uh, when I did go into the doctor, they missed a the diagnosis because epiglottitis doesn't ever happen to adults. Hmm. And so the, uh, but they, they took an x-ray anyway. And the radiologist, uh, was like, yeah, this guy's going to be dead in two hours. He needs to get here now. And, um, the, uh, and here's the piece that, that really stands out to me is like after, you know, 20 something years of, of doing the native American spiritual work and in graduate school, I am a, a therapist and life coach. And, um, the school that I went to was a Buddhist, uh, was formed as the school started by a Buddhist teacher. And so we had required meditation classes every semester. And so with, you know, 15 years of the meditation practice, like during the whole thing, while, you know, I felt like I was choking to death, like I never got scared, never got worried. Mm. And when the radiologist said, you know, this guy needs to get here now, I, um, as I was gasping for breath, I, I told, I was in a satellite clinic for the, the hospital. I told the doctor, I was like, you know, hold on a second. And I took a breath and went to like the, that quiet place inside that journey space inside and, and asked for guidance, asked my spirit guides. And they said, yeah, go to the emergency room. The doctor asked if they wanted people have been wanting to beat me senseless for, for doing this. But the doctor said, do you want us to call you an ambulance? And so when I checked in, spirit guides were really clear. They said, an ambulance is going to take 48 minutes to get there. You don't have the time. Mm. I was like, <laughs> okay. Uh, what about calling a Uber or a Lyft? <laughs> and they said, a Lyft is going to take 22 minutes to get there. You know, if you drive yourself, you can be there in 32 minutes. Oh, my God. And so I was like, okay, can I do it? Like, can I physically do it? Because I was really, really sick. And the uh, and they said, you know, if you're careful. So I drove myself 32 minutes to the emergency room. And uh, when I got there, I was barely able to get in the door from where I parked. And the, the security guard uh, checking, you know, doing the, had to go through a metal detector at the at the door to the emergency room, the security guard saw how bad I was. And the, um, you know, and I was still in good spirits. I was like, no, I'm doing great. <laughs> That's, but, you know, I couldn't talk, couldn't breathe. And uh, they got me into a room in about six minutes. And um, the, uh, you know, the whole time I was, my spirit guides had confirmed, yeah, I had two hours it was by the time I got into surgery I had 25 minutes left and they were, they actually brought in a video camera to, because they had never gotten like video, a training video of what it's like when somebody's got oh. epiglottitis and Hold they on, wanted make to sure you get on your makeup, smile. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. They were like, do you mind if we do this? And I was like, no, that's great. You know, as long as, as, you know, as long as somebody learns from it. And, um, but, and it was the, uh, the ER crew was great. The doctors there, they immediately said, you know, you must not be able to swallow because anytime I tried to swallow, it would make me gag because my throat was touching itself inside and hitting the gag reflex. And so I was having to like carry around a little plastic bottle to spit in anytime I had saliva in my mouth. And the, um, and so while my throat was closing up, while I was getting where I couldn't breathe, I didn't sleep for, you know, the full 36 hours. Um, it uh, woke me up at midnight. I'd slept about an hour on uh, the Sunday night and then didn't, uh, didn't sleep, you know, basically for five days through the recovery process while I was in the hospital because I was coughing so bad. Yeah. Did so you, that was um, the short version. Well, you said that um, that the way you handled it was because of your Native American 
um, spiritual trainings, right? So did yeah. you ever at any time though, during that 36 hours, think that that was it? Like I'm going to die or did you not, the, did not even cross your mind? Yeah, it, I, I had a feeling like this could be it. And a good friend of mine had just had a, uh, what they call a widow maker heart attack where he died and was gone for seven or eight minutes and, uh, and came back and he doesn't have any, any memories or any awareness of what happened during that time. But it, um, and we had been talking about it too. And, um, and in the, in some native American traditions, experiences like this are seen as a purification. And so a spiritual and, and emotional purification and the, the, term that uh popped in my head was like i feel like i got wrung out like emotionally just like you would wring out a, a washcloth or something and it um and it was it was like a reset or a reboot where my diet has uh the the three or four things in my diet that you know those things that we know we shouldn't eat but we do anyway it uh yeah. it's been like a total yeah it's been like a total reboot um, in terms of that. And it's, uh, the, and it felt like a, a kick in the ass in terms of me taking another step. You know, the tagline that I have in all my marketing is be real, be raw and make your life awesome. And for me, it was a, like, a a big kick in the ass to take another step forward in being even more raw and more real mm. and bringing me, you know, even more unfiltered into not just into my work and, and what I do for others, but in my own life. And the, um, you know, and that's been, uh, you know, and that's reflected in the, in cleaning up my diet and getting, um, uh, getting more focused and taking care of my body and, and, and in all my relationships too. Well, that's awesome. I just want um, to let you guys know you're watching Taco Tuesday. This is our first episode. We're talking about near-death experiences. And if you're interested in connecting with anybody on the show, any of the guests or any of you know any of us here, you know me, Anita, Mary, or Steven, who's behind the scenes, go ahead and type the word talk in the comments below, and then you can connect with us. We have all of our, all of our contact information is there. So ladies, questions like, uh, this is just like scary. I, I've caught, have you guys ever coughed to the point where you felt like you were never going to be able to breathe again? I get coughing episodes yeah. like that. That's what I'm imagining. Like what was going on for you, but for 36 hours straight. When he yeah. gave the yeah. example of uh, breathing from that small little cocktail straw. Yeah. To the I, I don't know if anyone really did this while they were listening, but I noticed myself. I even said it. I, I started yeah. to breathe a little bit deeper I started to really appreciate my lungs a little bit more. And um, <laughs> just to imagine being arrested in that situation, uh, I, you know, we don't know what that feels like because if you were to close your mouth and close your nose and just stay that way, like your body wants to live, your body wants to breathe. That's, you know, it, it, it says, nope, you're going to live. So I, I'm, I'm so fascinated by this, as I've been saying before, you know, the messages that different people get when they go through a near-death experience is it sounds like, the message he received was when he, I'm hearing and, and envisioning this ringing out situation where you truly get an opportunity to, to um, you know, live better in so many different aspects. Mm -hmm. Did you receive a message? Maybe it may not have been heard, but like you felt it while you were there. Was there some kind of message that was shared to you? Yeah, there was a couple of things and it was more that, um, well, one, I get messages like that all the time uh, for myself and for everybody else. And so that that kind of thing of, of feeling like you're receiving divine guidance is not a new experience for me. That's um, it is to the point where it's kind of an everyday thing. But the the things that really stuck out to me was the entire time I was in the hospital. I uh, just being myself. It. Uh, people kept commenting on how I was with a hospital staff and with my friends that came in and they were, they were like, God, one of my buddies was there when a woman came in to talk to me about something or another. And he was like, you just, he, he was like, dude, you just 
sprinkle love on everybody, don't you? <laughs> and it was like, yeah, <laughs> like, why aren't you? And the, um, you know, and so all my work through all of like all my professional training and my personal development is about getting rid of everything in our life that keeps us from being who we truly are, from being in a, in a, in a state of loving and loving ourselves and being able to love others freely. And so, you know, and part of that is like learning to set boundaries with people so that you don't have to stop being who you generally are or Mm -hmm. genuinely are and learning to get in touch with our true, real, raw emotions, being learning to make peace with the, the stuff that's in there that you may not like or have judgments about cleaning up the stuff that, that is not a genuine part of who you are and, you know, and then finding out what is genuine and and beginning to live that and make that a part of your everyday life. And so like in a situation where, um, where it's like a, a fresh new meeting of somebody, like somebody coming into the hospital room, I was like, my natural way of being is just to be playful and loving and the, um, and I noticed that like through the experience, I could be even more of that. And really it's like trusting that that part of me is real, that it's you know, not something that, well, yeah. go ahead. I was going to say one thing I'm noticing when you talk, okay. When you're talking, you can feel your breath. You can feel it every, you, I can hear that. I really have tuned into that where you can mm. feel it and you can feel it. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I just take this deep breath and go outside, and just take it all in and say, oh, that's unbelievable. And every time I can hear it in you, that's what I'm hearing when you say that. Cause I hear what now everyone's going to go back and listen, yeah. because when you talk, <laughs> I can hear you. I, I know only one other person that has done that where you can hear that breathing. And that's what I'm getting mm. from you is that you're breathing in love and life and and that is happening yeah. each time you take that breath. That's really cool. Yeah. The, you know, back in the days when uh, emailing first became popular and some of us didn't have any friends to talk to. So we just forwarded <laughs> a bunch of funny emails to each other. You guys remember that time before <laughs> social media? Yeah. Oh, I never did one that. Email. <laughs> no, no. I mean, but and somebody else did. I was just bored of myself, so I get a whole bunch of emails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there was one email that I got, and this was, um, I remember it was my first year of grad school in when I was first really working with uh, the meditation practice in graduate school. There was an email that was like seventh grade science test answers that were so wrong that they were funny. And one of the answers a kid said, when you breathe, you inspire. When you don't breathe, you expire. Okay. And I went, uh, bam, that's yep, it that's right it. there. You and it. you know, and I've, I've got an entire chapter in my book called Take a Breath. And the, the book is Pillars of Awesome Relationships. And one of the one of the big pitfalls that people run into in relationships is not feeling their genuine feelings or feeling what they feel like they're supposed to be feeling or you know anything like that and uh, with you know and if you're not breathing you're not feeling and so we, it's vital you know I spent um, during graduate school I thought I was going to take an easy elective taking a yoga class and it turned out to be an intensive class and we spent the first six weeks of the class just on the lower lung breath and getting to where you know I got to where I could feel my breath like in my pelvic cavity down in my pelvis Mm -hmm. and the uh but the first three weeks I was not getting it and Mm -hmm. finally one day at the end of class I was laying on my yoga mat in shavasana and I started feeling this like tingling in my in my chest and and I was immediately I started thinking, it was like, oh, what's going on? Is there something to process? Do I have like, you know, is there some kind of hurt? And the feeling stopped. And when I started thinking, my breath stopped and I went, oh, dumbass, just breathe. (laughs) And so then I started breathing again and my breath dropped down deep into my belly again and the tears started flowing again. And it was, um, and what it, what was coming up right then, uh, one of my horses actually, 
this guy, uh, this is a portrait of one of my horses who had just passed away right before that semester started. And I'd been so busy with my business, uh, I had not even taken time to grieve. Mm -hmm. But laying there, once I really started taking those deep breaths, it opened my heart. And the way I think of it and the way that I teach it is when we breathe deep down into our belly, it's like the, the breath flows across our emotional heart and breathes life into it. And it you know, opens up so we feel more and feel more of that stuff that gets buried inside at times. Wow. Well, we are, are out of time. So I want to thank you so much, Marcus, for being here. You guys want to connect with Marcus, type the word talk in the comments below. And then again, you can connect with any of us at the show, but go ahead and connect with Marcus. You know, um, he helps women. So I, I thought that was uh, really cool that you, he helps women. Yay. Go women. <laughs> so, but Marcus, thank you so much for being here on the show and sharing your experience that you had. You know, I'm sorry you weren't able yeah. to make it through the, you know, the competition, but we had you on the first show. So, and yeah, yeah, really thank you. Your, your sharing your story and makes me really do, like Mary said, you know, really appreciate my breath, you know, and, and just mm. like remembering, remembering to breathe and breathe deeply. Like you said, you know, just breathe deeply. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. thank you so much. And Stephen, we're going to send Marcus down to the green room and we're going to, you know, finish up the show here and want to talk about next week's show. We're bringing on Mr. Dave Austin. We're going to talk about conquering the goal game. Dave Austin is absolutely amazing. Oh, my selfie light just went out. So there we go. <laughs> Um, he's absolutely amazing. And for those of you who remember the show, The Six Million Dollar Man, way back in the day, he's related to Steve Austin. So it's going to be a really fun show. We're going to talk about the, the you know, starting off your year just right. Um, you guys have anything you want to talk about, Dave? I don't know if you know Dave or not, but anything you want to say about him, if you do? Oh, I know Dave really well. And awesome. I think the best part about Dave is that his energy, just like we're seeing here, his energy, excitement for what he does is so contagious. And he just brings it home and he goes into what's called game ready. And mm -hmm. I do game ready every morning now and wait till you hear it. It's so powerful. I love it. I can't, I'm so excited. He's coming on. Yeah. He's going to be amazing. And Anita, have you met Dave yet? No, not yet, but I look forward to meeting him. Awesome. It's it's going to be a really, really great show. And like Mary said, you know, he does this thing called Game Ready, and he's going to talk to us about animals and how, you know, animals, you know, play parts in our lives and how um, it, it's just going to be a really, really interesting show. So you've got to stay tuned for that. On January 22nd, we're going to be interviewing a Holocaust survivor. Uh, we're calling that show Living Fearlessly in the Here and Now. She's, I believe she's 85 years old now, and she'll actually be in person with me, which is going to be cool. But, you know, so you guys will be on here. She'll be in person with me, and I'm going to try for the first time, ladies. I'm going to try wow. in studio, in studio audience. <laughs> wow. So we'll see how it wow. goes. I'm really excited, but let's end the show. I want you guys to have an opportunity to share, you know, something motivational, inspirational for our guests. And again, type talk in the comments below if you want to you know, be notified all the future shows as well. So, so Anita, you know, you know t take us out with something, you know, motivational, no, nothing like being put on the spot. <laughs> yeah, nothing like being put on the spot. Um, you know, it's really not that difficult to, to, to say what I'm about to say because it kind of encompasses what we just heard today. There are two guests that we had, or really three, literally, but the two topics that we're, we were talking about regarding near-death experiences has to do with the common denominator of love. We heard about liquid love, and we also heard about this incredible love that this wonderful gentleman, Marcus, uh, experienced. And even though he had the connection in the past, he came back with more love. And if, for those people who go through hardships, who might, you know, be of faith and you get angry, you get angry at God, you get angry at, at the situations that take place and you don't know, and you don't understand, you know, maybe these experiences, these near death experiences can help us recognize that underneath all those layers of frustration really resides love. And I hope that, you know, as we go forward with whatever it is that we do, that we kind of remember these stories as reminders that underneath some of those things, we just have to take our time and have our patience. And I think that love will be revealed. Awesome. Oh, and before Mary says something, I forgot. Um, if you're interested in being a guest on the show, we are looking for guests for different topics. Um, go to, um, oh my gosh, what is it? <laughs> I forgot. Oh, it's living live. 
livinglive.tv slash TOT guest. So go to yeah, livinglive.tv slash TOT guest and go ahead and sign up to, uh, you'll be to be a guest on the show. No guarantee that you'll be on the show, but you know, go ahead and, and put your application in. So Mary, send us off with of something absolutely amazingly motivational. And remember, okay. love. Love, love, love. Okay. Well, my whole thing is that um, what I've gotten from today, which I think is really exciting, is that sometimes you have to go ahead and take into yourself and just jump to go ahead and say it's okay to listen. It's okay to mm. hear. It's okay to accept. Because yeah, I'm the one that will say, whoa, this is way over my head. <laughs> this is way past I can even imagine or even put in my vocabulary. But just jump into the world and listen and hear and, and listen to what people are saying. So don't put your guards up. Don't put your foot down. Just jump into life. Just jump. I love that. I love that. And then mine is just, you know, just having an open heart, open mind for, you know, all the possibilities that are out there. There's a world of abundance. And so often so many of us live in this world of lack. And so if you don't believe something can happen, you know, just open your mind. Like Mary was saying, you know, just open your mind. Like, like Anita was saying, you're talking about um, love, right? Open your mind, open your heart, have the love in you so that you can see the beauty that this world has to offer. And, you know, Get yourself out there. Do the things that you want to live. Hashtag no regrets. That's my big hashtag is live your life with no regrets. And we will see you next Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. UK time with Mr. Dave Austin. And we're going to be talking about conquering the goal game. So we'll see you guys then. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank Yay, you. Linda. First show off.